Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, lecture number 11, uh, combined cycle power plants uh, with vehicle recovery. Uh, today we'll be uh, studying the most important cycle for power generation, and that is combined cycle power plant or combined cycle. Uh, we have seen like from the previous uh, power cycle that the efficiency of any of the cycle, if you are uh, comparing it with the Brighton cycle or the gas cycle, or rank kind cycle, uh, which is called as steam cycle as well. Uh, the efficiency is not that much. Or in other word, like if uh, the most of the uh, cycles efficiency they lie between 20 to 30 uh, percent. Having said that, uh, the most of the energy that mean like 70 percent energy is wasted as a waste heat. So it is possible to capture that energy which is actually uh, the releasing energy and we can have a generating system that can be more than 70 percent efficient and that is by recovering and using the heat, waste heat from the combustion process this strategy is called as the cogeneration or a combined heat and power uh, cogeneration we have already discussed in our previous lectures uh, where the vapor power system was actually used for district heating or cooling the present lectures or the present um, application would be actually based on utilizing the exhaust gas for the power generation or for the production of the steam from the waste heat and then for the uh, and utilizing that steam for the power generation uh, and by that one we would be actually able to have a power system or a cycle which will be much more efficient than the cycle we have already studied. So one of the cycle or the cycle which actually we will be discussing in our lecture would be the combined cycle. The combined cycle, a combined cycle power generation as the name suggests they utilize two main cycle. One is gas cycle or the Brighton cycle, or Joule cycle we call it, and the vapor, vapor power cycle or the Rankine cycle. Or the steam cycle we call it uh, in a gas turbine power plants the natural gas is undergoing uh, natural gas is compressed and it is actually uh, undergoing a combustion in a combustion chamber the resultant high pressure gases that is actually utilized for the uh, driving the the turbine or the gas turbine from the uh, from the the high pressure gases um, definitely the the it will be used for the produ production of the electricity although it is clean and fast in starting the gas turbine power plants suffer from a low thermal efficiency and mostly the gas power cycle they have got the efficiency between 25 to 30 percent and um, that mean like much of the energy which is around like say 70 to 75 percent uh, that is being wasted as a waste heat so this waste heat the hot gases from the gas turbine instead of being released as a waste can be captured and channeled to a steam cycle steam power cycle where it would be utilized for producing the steam and then that steam would be actually used in expansion of a uh, expansion that steam would be expanded in a steam turbine for the uh, drive the turbine and obviously for the uh, generation of the electricity now the as we said like the combined cycle is combination of a two cycle the gas power cycle and the vapor power cycle the gas power cycle have got the merits of the high temperature which is the gas power cycle is uh, operating at a temperature of uh, 1100 to 1660 uh, 1650 degrees centigrade um, while the Rankine cycle they operate between 540 to 650 degrees centigrade. So that means like the combined cycle is actually utilizing the merits of the high temperature cycle, the gas cycle, and the, the lower temperature cycle, which is actually the Rankine cycle. So what actually happened in a combined cycle or what how the combined cycle work? In a gas turbine cycle or gas power cycle, air enter into the compressor. And then it is actually compressed and it is passed to the combustion chamber where fuel is added in a combustion chamber 
and heat is actually heat is produced uh, that heat would be used for the production of the or the, the that heat would actually uh, make hot gases and then that hot gases would be expanded in a gas turbine cycle uh, sorry gas turbine to produce the 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 electricity from it now once it actually derived the turbine the hot gases would be the uh, the hot gases would be exhausted from the turbine exit and it would be actually exhausted in a chimney these gas turbine are normally used uh, normally operated at a high a to fuel ratio uh, and that is because like the, the it would be uh, like that the one of the reason would be to make a, a sufficient air would be available for the further combustion if you, if it is required and the other purpose is like as as we are driving the gas turbine cycle with the hot gases so the amount of the gases which mean like the mass of the gas is also increased by 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 using high afr ratio now what actually i've said like when when the hot gases is utilized in the gas turbine uh, it would be expended or it will be exhausted from the gas turbine uh, the hot now but the the hot gases rather than actually going into the chimney uh, outside the the gas tur the gas turbine cycle it is harnessed or it is actually enter into a heat exchanger another heat exchanger and that heat exchanger is sometimes known as heat recovery boiler or heat recovery steam generator that mean like hrb heat recovery boiler or heat recovery steam generator hrsg now in that in this heat recovery boiler if i would say like in this heat exchanger the heat is utilized from one end the heat is utilized for the generation of the steam so that means like from one end the the water would be coming in and that water would be heated to 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 form a steam superheated steam and that superheated steam would be utilized in the in the expansion uh, expansion in the the steam turbine and for the production of electricity a further obviously at the end of the exit of the turbine there would be a condenser and there would be a pump to to have the cycle or to have the rankine cycle back so that mean like uh, rather than the steam generator having its own heat utilization or in other words having its own heat sources the the heat which was actually exhausted from the gas turbine cycle is utilized for the steam generation for the the rankine cycle and that is in the heat recovery steam generator so in this in this manner the steam the sorry the gas turbine act as a topping cycle for a act sorry act as a topping cycle while the steam uh, steam cycle or rank iron cycle act as a bottoming cycle so that means the topping cycle would be having a, its combustion chamber where heat would be added from the fuel or uh, you know from uh, who heat would be added or heat would be actually uh, made um, uh, from the fuel, fuel uh, combustion of the fuel and and it would be to do uh, it would be actually utilized for the production of the hot gases then it would be utilized for the in a gas turbine cycle further the the gases would be uh, rather than actually exhausting into the atmosphere it would be channeled to a heat exchanger which is known as heat recovery boiler in this heat exchanger the steam would be generated and that steam would be further expanded in a steam turbine to produce further electricity in this manner the the efficiency of the turb uh, sorry the efficiency of the both the uh, gas turbine and the gas turbine cycle and the steam cycle would be increased and that's why we call it as a ga the the combined cycle power plant have got the greater efficiency than any of the other uh, power cycle now in uh, normally in large uh, combined cycle power plant used for the base load operation uh, that mean like the only uh, usefulness or other other word the 
the only purpose of that power plant is to produce electricity, uh, the efficiency is the prime important. So for that purpose, uh, to produce the high temperature steam or the high temperature superheated steam, there is another component which we call it as a separate superheater or what we call it as a supplementary firing superheater is also installed. So we have got another supplementary firing superheater installed in it in which what we call it, uh, what, in, in what would happen like, we have got a steam coming from this um, heat recovery steam generator. It will be further superheated or the temperature of the steam will be further enhanced in a sup supplementary firing superheater. And then that would be again expanding in a steam turbine. So in this case, the efficiency would be further increased. Uh, and this is also important, like if, if for example, for, for any purpose, the gas turbine cycle or uh, uh, the ga gas cycle is turned off. So the steam so supplementary firing superheater would actually provide the heat, sufficient heat for the, the extra running of the, the um, topping cycle, sorry, bottoming cycle. That is actually the Rankine cycle. So superheater has got the, the purpose of uh, uh, providing an extra um heat to the the exhausting steam from the the uh, heat recovery boiler hrb uh, also when the topping cycle is turned off uh, so it actually provide uh, further uh, heat to the to the system to to actually make the cycle running um it's a like the steam turbine output is usually greater than the gas turbine output for the ratio eight to one, so so steam turbine uh, have got the the technology which is quite mature. So the steam turbine have are the bigger the bigger in size, while the turbine the gas turbine cycles are actually or the gas turbines are not in that much bigger. So that's why the the steam cycle uh, the steam cycle is therefore designed for the high efficiency with heat heat treat and full complement of the feed water heater. Uh, also, the, as I've said, like the force draft fan may be installed uh, ahead of supplementary firing to operate a steam cycle on its own when the gas turbine is off. Um, it is also like the when the steam cycle, uh, as we uh, as I've said, like the steam cycle is actually uh, of a bigger size than the gas turbine cycle. So sometimes we do not have got just one to one con configuration of the gas turbine cycle and a Rankine cycle, but we have got uh, 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 um, uh, Rankine cycle supplemented with uh, many number of the gas cycle. So there might be actually more than one gas cycle supplemented or the combined with the 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 Rankine cycle. Uh, further, there are variation of the gas cycles. Uh, also, sorry, the combined cycle uh, to extract the maximum maximum amount of energy from the gas leaving the HRB. Depending on the temperature of that gases, uh, it can be used for the partial heating uh, as we have already discussed in the regeneration. It can be actually used for the feed water heating uh, in a closed type heat exchanger, uh, which we call it closed, uh, closed type uh, feed water heater and generating steam in a dual or multi-pressure uh, pressure steam cycle. Uh, various combination of the Combined cycle is also there. Uh, gas cycle with supplementary firing, gas cycle with regeneration and feed water heat, uh, gas cycle with multi pressure steam cycle, and also the uh, sorry, not the gas cycles, the combined cycle with supplementary combined cycle with regeneration and combined cycle with multi pressure steam cycle and the combined cycle for a nuclear power plants. So, this is actually a little bit about the uh, the um, theory behind the the combined cycles. Uh, obviously, as I've said, like the there is actually HRB, which mean like we are recovering the waste heat, uh, which is actually exhausting from the gas cycle. So the gas cycle, the heat which was actually not utilized, is further utilized in the bottoming cycle, and that is the Rankine cycle. So. Having said that, the combined cycle has a, got a gas turbine which has got the high 
average temperature input, which is a high average temperature heat addition in the combustion chamber. While the vapor cycle have got the low temperature heat rejection. So that means like in a combined cycle, the heat is added in a combustion chamber of the gas turbine cycle, which is at the higher temperature, as we have said, like 1100 to 1650. While the Rankine cycle, which is having a low temperature heat rejection. So that means like the thermal efficiency of the combined cycle would be greater than any of the either of the cycle if we are looking at it as individually. So many application of the gas, uh, the combined cycle are good choice and they are increasingly being used worldwide for electrical power generation. Um, having said that, uh, in Pakistan uh, further, there is uh, even the current prime minister also said like there would be no coal power plants now installed in the uh, in Pakistan. So that means like they would be looking for the the high efficiency combined cycle power plants, and that is what actually the future of the combined cycle power plant is. Um, now again, with reference to Figure 11.2 over here, we have got the combination of two cycle, the gas cycle and the the vapor cycle. So that means like the efficiency would now depend on the work output of the gas cycle and the work output of the vapor cycle. There is only one heat addition and that is the heat addition in the combustion chamber of the gas cycle. So that means the QN would be only one. Yes, if, if you're looking for the supplementary firing that is actually out, uh, away from the uh, or inlet of the the Rankine cycle so that you can add a supplementary firing in over here as well but that would be definitely not that much and efficiency would be still higher as in previous uh, cycles uh, we were talking about the efficiency we were talking about the mass flow rate uh, so as far as the efficiency is concerned we should we should, we should have a balance of the mass masses as well and we should have a balance of energy as well so uh, looking at this one so we have got the mass we should have got the mass and the energy balance now the only thing what actually we have done in this combined cycle we have added a, um, a component with, or the heat exchanger which was called as the hrb or heat recovery steam generator or heat recovery boiler uh, sometimes it is also called as the waste heat recovery boiler uh, so that means like we would be looking for the mass and energy balance of this steam generator. Uh, sorry, the uh, this HRB. So in in this case, the mass of the gas is entering at part four, uh, at sorry point four, and actually it is leaving at point five. Uh, so that means like the energy, which would be actually transferring from the gas turbine to the in the heat recovery boiler would be from four to five so that would be actually h4 minus h5 that would be the energy which we would be entering into the combined cycle power plants sorry uh, the heat recovery boiler uh, that should be utilized by the steam or by the feed water which is coming from six and it is going towards the seven when the steam is generator so that mean like the mass of the gases would be actually bringing this amount of energy and should be transferred to the the feed water heater to produce the steam so that should be equal to mass of the steam which would be there at 7 and that would be actually equal to further at 7 minus at 6 so that should be the energy balance of hrb so looking at this one so that means like seven minus h6 should be mass of the vapor should be equal to mass of the gas h4 minus h1 uh, h5 where mg and mv are the mass flow rate of the gas and vapor respectively so in this case like the combined cycle performance can be analyzed in terms of uh, mass and energy balancing um, as said earlier the gas turbines are not yet built in sizes as large as the the steam turbine 
and we have already said like the combined cycle often built in combination of more than one cycle uh, more sorry more than one gas cycle uh, and one steam cycle such combinations show a uh, certain advantage not only in a higher total plant output but also in the flexibility in a service and the part efficiency and part load efficiency as well uh, for example like if we have got one to one combination uh, sorry one to one combination that would mean like we have got uh, one gas turbine and one steam turbine we might have got a two one combination and so certain certain time we have got a combination of uh, four into one as well so that means like we have got we can have a different combination of of the the gas cycles and the steam cycles uh, that also mean like if we at, at certain point we do not need um, as i've said like we do not need that much of power so we can turn off any of the gas turbine and the steam turbine would definitely would continue so if we turn off any of the gas turbine so that mean like we would be going into the part load and the part load efficiency of the combined cycle is much much better uh, than any other cycle we have already said um, the rank kind cycle is good or the steam cycle is good uh, as a base load operation the nuclear cycle is quite reliable in the base load operation but nuclear cycle and the rank kind cycle they are not good in a part load and they are they, the part load efficiency is much much less uh, if we are uh, if you are running in a part load operation while the combined cycle it's quite a flexible uh, um, cycle and obviously the part load efficiency of the combined cycle is much much better in, uh, in any of the cycles uh, now coming to the advantage and disadvantages of the combined cycle the combined cycle uh, offer many advantages for example one of the main advantages uh, is that the fuel the combined cycle is used is a natural gas so it is actually environmental emission of the uh, the, the environmental emission is quite low uh less pollution is produced uh obviously there would be not much complex and expensive environmental control system that would be installed transportation of the fuel is quite quite uh, easy and obviously there is no further ashes produced and there is no further further uh, environmental degradation produced in the combined cycle or the natural gases cycle uh the gas portion of also the gas portion of the combined cycle is very easy to install uh, that means uh, for the short schedule of about like for example one year uh, from order to operation uh, while yes the the steam turbine portion would take a little bit while but if having said that the steam and the power the the gas cycle uh, you can actually um, say like the total total would take, take time but the gas portion would be easy to install and would be up and, and running in one year uh, that happened uh, in a bucky power station but uh, due to the thermal efficiency they have to stop the bucky power station and uh, that is actually in jalan the bucky power station uh, and then obviously the steam portion uh, of the combined cycle was made uh, further and then it was running in a full ca combined capacity um, but the thing is like uh, if there is actually a certain requirement of the power uh, then obviously the combined cycle power plants also offer quick part loading as well for example like GE model 7 7000 gas turbine uh, is able to produce a maximum output of around 200 megawatt within 30 minutes so that means like the, in 30 minutes you can have a power output of 20 megawatt obviously the steam portion would take further further time to start if, if you're starting from the cold start but yes for the quick loading that um, quick part loading you can have a uh, gas turbine which, which would be running but uh, earlier as i said like the gas turbine portion is not so efficient so if you are running the the combined cycle with only the gas uh, turbine portion so that would be not much efficient and obviously it, it would be having that much uh, that disadvantages but that is still good for the requirement peak requirement uh, and also for the base load as well um, if if uh, for for fur further if uh, the the requirement is not that much or a requirement get low 
uh, low uh, in certain uh, time of uh, day. Then obviously the gas portion can be turned off or gas portion can be turned uh, not used. Uh, and then we can utilize the supplementary firing to increase the turbine output in terms of increased output and demand. On the other hand, gas portion can be stopped when there is decrease in demand. Um, now, it is also cheaper to build a combined cycle power plant than coal, nuclear, or renewable power plants. Uh, the capital cost of now for the combined cycle power plant is, is it is getting lower and lower. So most of the country, uh, rather than installing the coal power plants and the nuclear power plants in general, they are now looking for the, for the, the um, combined cycle power plants. Uh, and that in also include uh, our country, that's mean like Pakistan. Um, having said about the advantages of the combined cycle power plants, uh, we do have got the disadvantages. Uh, as said earlier uh, about the natural gas as a fuel for the combined cycle. So natural gas as a fuel also were make uh, a little bit disadvantage in terms of if you have got, if you're in the country, if your country is importing a, a natural gas or it has got low in a natural gas, um, it actually is true for our country as well. The natural gas reservoir, as of some reports say like uh, after like two and a half to three years, the natural gas reservoir will start depleting in our country. So that's why they have got a, um, a, a agreement of uh, importing the LNG uh, from Qatar. So LNG itself is actually quite an expensive fuel in terms of if we are producing our own natural gas. So further, if, if we, are, we do not have got a natural gas in our country uh, and we are running our, all our power plants on a natural gas, so the power rate would be actually increased or the power uh, would be definitely increasing. And that happened recently as well when we were utilizing the LNG for the for the power production as well. So that is like the LNG rate over here is around like 1700 uh, rupees per MMBTU, while the natural gas that was previously uh, for the captive power plant, they have got the uh, tariff rate and that was around like uh, 600 to 1000 rupees per MMBTU. So that means like if you if you do gas reservoir are not that much, so you have got a little bit disadvantage towards utilizing or towards using the combined cycle only for the power generation. Uh, as also the combined cycle power plant is the combination of the two technology. So the complexity is actually increased. And once the complexity is increasing, increasing the maintenance cost is also increasing and the skill lab and the skilled people would also be increasing. The capital cost of the combined cycle generation power plant is higher than that of the gas turbine cycle. But having said that, we have got the, the low, low, low components in the, the um, combined cycle in comparison to the, to the, the rank kind cycle. So that means like combined cycle is still much better uh, in terms of cost than the than the, the rank kind cycle or the steam cycle running on a, on a coal. Yes, about the future, we do have got a very much high future, uh, uh, if I would say like uh, a bright future of the combined cycle. Um, these include also uh, looking towards the nuclear power plants, we have got safety issue with the nuclear power plants. We have got the fuel issue with the nuclear power plants. We have got the waste, um, I would say like the waste dumping, fuel dumping issue with the, with the nuclear power plants. So obviously in comparison with the nuclear power plants, the combined side and obviously one of the other reason that we do have like the efficiency issue as well. So comparing them with the nuclear power plants, the combined cycle power plants, is much more good in terms of uh, flexibility, in terms of reliability, in terms of fuel, in terms of waste, and so on and so forth. So obviously, many, many countries are now investing in the, in the combined cycle technology rather than the nuclear technology. 
and this was one of the reason when 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 Iranian and and EU, EU uh, talks were actually in progress in in, in prog uh, progress like a few years back, uh, and the Iranian was uh, actually trying to 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 um, convince the uh, European Union about the nuclear power plants. Uh, so European Union was actually offering them, and and they did offer them a combined cycle power plants and Iranian were having no set in it. So that mean like what actually, uh, it's say like the nuclear power plants, if you are looking for the nuclear energy the from the nuclear fuel, it is much better to go for the combined cycle. And obviously the Iran was, Iran is actually the second largest producer of gases as well. Um, the earth supply of the gases has been estimated like this would be there like 70 to 100 year as long as the natural gas prices remain low the combined cycle would be there the combined cycle would be actually having ad advantages uh, the the cost capital cost from the, of the uh, combined cycle generation it is actually dropped from uh, 600 kilowatt to 350 per kilowatt today uh, by many as i said like many countries uh, are actually switching towards the the combined cycle power plants and um, including the in, including pakistan so by 2025 40 to 50 percent of uk power supply would be dominated by the combined cycle power plants uh, having said that united kingdom they are still producing electricity around 30 to 30 to 35 percent electricity from the coal power plants from these, the, with the country improvement of the system, we can see that combined power generation will become the mainstay in the power industry for at least the next few decades. Thank you very much. Have a nice time.